everybody uh, welcome to the next instalment in our um, recovery series where we're going to be looking at the way in which I did first and gradual exposure and um, we've got a big cardio on today because it's freezing in England at the moment Middlesbrough's grotty and windy and rainy and ugh um, I had a couple of requests on things for us to be looking at together in uh, this series and one of them was oil so I thought considering I'd butter last time it kind of makes a bit of sense to do oil today um, oil's a really funny one, and I know a great one that's for all of us is on that hit list of ours. Um, major figure, major kind of lots of hot sweats and, and pacing around the kitchen goes involved in terms of oil. Um, I think one of the things about it as well in terms of rewiring the brain is concerned is because it, it's, it, it's hidden. Um, obviously, if you want to cook something, you often are going to have to cook it in oil. Um, and not knowing how much oil people are putting in things can cause some of us quite a lot of stress. Um, so I suppose the first thing that I did in terms of oil and getting used to it was I, I started to do a lot of the cooking for myself. Now just be really careful with this one because it can get to a stage where that in itself becomes another disordered behaviour. Um, it got to the stage one point where I was having to eat at times of the day when no one else was around so that I would, I would be in control and that was disordered in itself because it meant actually anorexia was making the decisions for me. So. Um, Yes, the first step is you're going to have to start to think of how to use it in your cooking and maybe get someone to help you out with that and actually in terms of cooking. But just be very, very mindful that actually at some point you are going to have to take control. Um, well, sorry, you're going to have to lose control and let someone else do the actual cooking. Um, in terms of which oil to get, I get oil. Like, this is vegetable oil from a local Asian supermarket. All right, this is what we've got in the house at the minute. We sometimes have posh stuff, we sometimes have not so posh stuff. Uh, I remember in my recovery speaking to my dietitian about the best types of oil and she gave me the best advice ever. She just said, just buy oil. It really was like that simple, like just buy oil. Um, yes, they all have a different flavour. Yes, they all have a different makeup. Yes, arguably some are, um, have different benefits than others. But ultimately, when you're trying to just gr grab hold of the fact that um, you're wanting to cook with oil, just buy oil, all right? And the problem with it is if you start to think about, similar with the butter, if you start to think about, right, you want a specific type of oil, um, or a specific, you know, you want flaxseed oil, it has to be rapeseed oil, it has to be groundnut oil, um, what you're gonna do then, you're creating yourself too many um, parameters to work with, so ultimately what will happen is like I've done, you'll stand in, this, in the supermarket for hours, you know, looking at, picking up bottles of oil, looking at them, and then going label wild. Um, and then ultimately, actually, the minute you're doing that, you know that you're not in control, you know that anorexia is in control, and also, you know that chances are, you're going to walk away with the oil that is the, like, the least damaging to anorexia, so therefore, the most damaging to your recovery. Um, so those massive, great big aisles of oil in the supermarket, the best advice I was given was just buy oil, so like, a bit like the butter, you're looking for those two gold packs, remember? Just, just a gold pack to grab and go. Most oil just comes in these like rectangular type bottles in Britain. I don't know what it's like abroad, but in Britain, this is what they come in. Um, the difference will just be the label. So if actually, if you go in and you say, I just want to buy oil, and you're looking for one of these rectangular type bottles, just grab it and just go. Um, like I said, this is just a cheapie. There's nothing, nothing special about this at all. This is just oil. Um, I then went through a stage where I would use uh, measuring spoons um, or cups you might have uh, to measure out the oil. Now, I just want to give you a massive word of warning over using things like this. Yes, some people say they're really, really helpful, and, and to them, you know, to have, to, if it says to have a tablespoon of oil, then, you know, to, to know what a proper tablespoon looks like is really important. But you, I became reliant on these. Um, these became my new measuring so when I kind of got out of weighing things and then went into measuring things with this um, and yet I suppose that it's gradual exposure it was removing one thing and then start to build and build and build but these start to become a bit of a hindrance so ultimately it was a case of having to just go for it in the end um, most things well, you know, if you wanted to look at recipes and things, most things will say like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of oil if you're making things, I don't know, like pancakes or um, if you're making uh, Yorkshire puddings or something. Um, but actually, you know, it's a glug. Listen. 
all right? As a glug of oil. So if you've got your pan, there's your oil quantity. Yep, if you're baking something, there's your oil quantity. If you're roasting vegetables, there's your quantity, because they need the, the, the tray's bigger. Um, and then you're just making sure that you are covering it. Now, you are going to feel terrified. <laughs> Right, isn't it like me? You're going to start to see. I mean, I, I've got oil on my fingers now from this from this bottom. There was a time when I would be panicking now because of the, having the oil on my fingers. It's just oil. There's nothing wrong with it at all. There's nothing to it. It helps you cook foods and it helps things more nutritious ultimately. But um, yeah, it, it was it was a biggie. But make sure once you've done your glugs and you're roasting your vegetables that you then coat your veg in it. There's no point just letting it sit because then you're just going to char the bottom of your veg and you're not going to enjoy it. The whole point is to remember that in recovery, it's about the breaking the fear, but it's about the taste. It's remembering and loving that part of life that's all about the taste. So if you then mix up your vegetables with your oil, it's going to taste so much better. Um, and then you're going to, your brain's going to go, oh, hang on, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, this, this is where this is the good stuff is. And then so over time, bit by bit, gradually, gradually, you'll start to become normal in the way you, you do it. But just like I spoke about butter, um, makes your recovery often says once it's in, it's in. So once you've used it, you've got to keep using it. So then every time you're cooking, you make sure you're cooking with oil. So again, gradual and phased exposure, I started off. So the first thing I started to do was roast potatoes. I'd done potatoes bit by bit by themselves. I'd then done potatoes in my butter round. So every time I had boiled potatoes or a jacket potato, I had to have butter in it. So it made sensible step for me to keep potatoes as the thing that I first started to experiment with these. And roast potatoes are delightful. So the fact that you can get them back in your life is awesome. Um, one really big thing with oil was dressings, salad dressings. Um, and the thing about salad dressing is that, yes, you can have salad without dressing. You can. You can have anything in life without anything. Um, but again, it's about taste and it's about enjoyment and it's about a love of things again. And salad dressings are one of life's little pleasures. Um, so starting to dress salads was a get that was a very very definite decision I had to make. So I think it was about April time when I s said to everybody again, you know, as me, you know, I say things out loud. Today I'm going to have a salad and I'm going to have it with dressing. Um, and I then would have every time then from that point on, even now. So today I just had salad with my lunch. And it had dressing on it. Um, so even today, I've had salad dressing. So from that point, so since April 2019, every time I've had salad, it's had dressing on it. You can buy dressing, dead easy. Too stressful for me. Far too stressful for me. The choice is unreal. Um, and the different challenges in some of the different dressings, you know, the seasonary type versus the oily type, which to get, when to get and why. So I thought, no, I'm not doing that to myself. It was too hard. So I got a couple of recipes and my husband and I made them. And what we did invest in is one of these, okay? So this is today's dressing. Um, this is from, I can't remember. It might be Lakeland. I can't remember. Anyway, you'll find them all over, like, or everywhere else, this sort of thing now. Um, supermarkets will have them. It's a, just a salad dressing shaker. So you put all your ingredients in. So this has got oil, mustard, uh, orange juice or lemon juice. Salt, pepper, um, some other things, can't remember what. You put it all in and you give it a good old shake and it's in there. And it lasts maybe four or five days. Now there was a period in my recovery because anorexia still had hold of a lot of what I was choosing where I was eating salad every day. But I told myself that I was having dressing in it. So the fact that my husband and I had made this, he, 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 he makes lovely dressing, so he, he created it. Um, I wasn't a million percent certain what was in it, so that was breaking a lot of control rules. But there's no labels on this. So once I realised that I actually liked the taste of it, it then became about taste and just going over that figure, rather than, again, being faced and confronted by those labels all the time. This sits in the fridge. It's got a little spout, and you just pour it on and dress your salad. Um, it's really tasty. Um, it lasts, like I said, about four or five days. And this has been a really good move on these little cheap little simple devices um, to make put salad dressing in. So to kind of recap, just buy oil. When you're starting to break it, once you've broken it and you've got it in your life, then experiment with other things. But initially just buy oil. Like you can see, this is a cheapy vegetable oil from the local Asian supermarket. 
walk into the supermarket and just grab the one that looks a bit rectangular. You're listening for one glug or two glugs if you're roasting veg. You need to coat your stuff in it and I suggest get your hands in it. Make it so anorexia can see that it's not going to affect you if it's on your hands. It doesn't affect you if it ends up on your face. Get yourself, really get yourself in it with oil. You need to because it's a biggie to crack. It will feel hard, it will feel tricky, but you know you can do it. Once you've then got to grips with this idea, um, then think about potentially purchasing one of these or something similar. Make yourself up some salad dressing. If buying it is causing too much of a spin, and put it in your fridge. But every time you have salad, from the minute you've made that decision, pour some of this on it. Um, I also did have at one point, I didn't, I threw it out uh, just over the week actually, I had a, a white version of this that I would just pour the oil in um, and that sat next to my cooker because again, all the labels and things on this, it was, it was too stressful when I first started to break it. So having like a, an oil pourer that just sat near the cooker meant that I just wasn't confronted with that label every day. Um, I hope that helps. That was oil. Um, I'm thinking the next time I might do snack, my snack cupboard mm, and hoarding. But we'll see. Anyway, that was the next episode in the series. I hope you are well and it's helped somebody out there. Take care. Bye.